accessibility. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and GitHub as at Georgie Codes. Uh, so what is GitHub? Um, being an engineering conference, I'm guessing that most people in this room probably know about GitHub. Um, but essentially, we're a platform that helps teams and individuals collaborate to build software. Um, there are currently over 14 million developers collaborating on 35 million repositories and over 30 million GIS. Uh, and all of this we host on hundreds of servers, most of it um, bare metal. So who is GitHub? Um, GitHub has been around now for about eight years, and there are now over 550 hubbers, which is the name we call ourselves. And of that, about 250 of us make up the technology side of the organization. Um, this is a screenshot of an internal application. Um, and on this particular day, it says that 312, or 56% of hubbers, hopefully you can read that, um, are currently working remotely outside of our San Francisco, San Francisco headquarters. Um, and this image of the world map shows just how spread out we are all across the world. At GitHub, we need communication tools that enable our highly distributed engineering teams to work better together across time zones. And for us, this means being able to build and ship whenever uh, and, f and, f and whenever. So before we talk about chat ops, I'd like to introduce you to this very dapper looking robot. Um, his name is Hubot. And Hubot is hands down the hardest working hubber. Um, and I thought this photo of balloon Hubot uh, with laser eyes was particularly rad. Uh, and it was taken quite recently at the GitHub satellite conference in Amsterdam. Um, so Hubot was built at GitHub. Um, and it's an open source project uh, that's written in CoffeeScript and Node.js. And it can run anywhere Node can run. Most people deploy it to Heroku. So Hubot's a chatbot. Uh, and you can invite him to any room or channel in chat, up, chat applications like Slack um, and HipChat. And Hubot was built at GitHub to help automate a lot of manual tasks uh, and also as a source of fun and silliness. Uh, Hubot ships with a small number of uh, core scripts, things like translating languages, um, integrating with maps, displaying images, that type of thing. But the real power of Hubot comes when you extend him yourself by creating your own scripts. So our two primary tools of communication at GitHub are firstly GitHub, no surprises there, uh, which we use for project write-ups, uh, issue tracking, code commits. Um, and the second one is Slack for chat. Uh, we have a social contract that you're not expected to reply to at mentions straight away. We see both of those tools as being asynchronous communication tools. Chat, and more specifically how we use chat ops, have had a really dramatic impact on how we work and ship software as a company. So in this talk, I'm going to run through some uh, examples of how we use chat ops at GitHub and how it really helps to shape our culture. So again, no surprises that we've written some Hubot scripts that integrate really tightly with GitHub. Um, a few helpful things that you can do are ask Hubot to subscribe a channel to a specific repository or repositories. Whenever an issue is opened or closed, uh, a pull request merge, Hubot will drop the description and link to it in chat. If you drop a link, uh, to an issue in chat, then Hubot will go and make a comment on that issue and link back to that exact chat line in Slack. Um, and this is really good for my teammate who lives in Sydney, for example. Uh, she won't have missed out on any chat that occurred while she was asleep due to time zone differences. Uh, repo commit messages appear in chat too then, and link to the diff. Um, when you push to your feature branch in one of our repos, a number of CI checks will run. Um, and if these checks pass then you, and you click Merge, then uh, from there, the project will be deployed automatically. And again, Hubot is going to chat to us every step of the way. So all of this is really helpful to build up a context about what your teammates are working on and what's being shipped at any given point in time. And um, this is all really especially helpful for distributed teams. 
Not all of our repositories allowed for automatic deploys, uh, even if CI checks pass. So for example, github.com is just a really big Rails app, um, and it includes the GitHub API, and deployment for that requires some extra care. So here is a graph of how many deploys we do um, over the course of a couple of weeks. You can see it kind of ranges anywhere from 10 up to around 100 per day. And as a company, we really value shipping frequent increment, incremental updates. Um, I mentioned before that it's important for us to be able to ship, build and ship whenever from wherever. So I'm now going to walk through uh, an example of how we use Hubot to help us achieve this. So we can initially test our changes in a staging environment. Staging environments are spun up on a per branch basis and as needed. And this means there's no contention for staging. You never have to wait on anyone else, which I think is really great. Um, but let's assume we've already tested our branch. It's totally good to go and we're set to ship. The first thing we need to do is ask Hubot to, Hubot to put us in the prod deployment queue. And with, we do this with the command hubot queue me to deploy my branch. Hubot will now stick us in a queue, and we can go away and do other things. Uh, and when we get to the, the front of the queue, Hubot will just at mention us in Slack. So to deploy, we just run hubot deploy my branch to prod. And Hubot will now ensure our branch is up to date with master and run all of the required CI checks. When the CI checks pass, Hubot will perform the deployment, and when it's done, respond reminding me that it's now a good time to check Haystack and GraphMe. And these are both internal exception and performance monitoring applications. And by having Hubot link to these apps in chat, we're really trying to nurture a culture of performance. We're saying it's not good enough to, that you've just deployed your code. You need to go and make sure that you didn't break anything and that you haven't introduced any new performance issues. Um, we really see performance as being every engineer's responsibility and not something that falls to just one team. So Haystack is our internal exception monitoring system. Uh, and and the, Hubot, the link that Hubot linked to uh, will link to a firehose view, which is only shows the exceptions that have occurred um, since your changes have gone live. So this makes it really easy to see if I've broken something uh, in, in this particular release, and I can quickly take steps to roll back the change if I need to. Um, and I'll usually keep an eye on this fire hose for a few minutes. But if I'm not doing my job properly and start go looking at Hacker News, something like that, um, Haystack has in place some uh, simple rules for anomaly detection. If a number of exceptions, if the number of exceptions like exceed some kind of threshold, um, then Hubot will ping me again in chat um, and to let me know that there's anomaly occurring, and I can go and check it out. Uh, the second link, Hubot Chats post-deployment, um, reminds me to check the GraphMe app. Um, and this is a screenshot of GraphMe. A um, little bit hard to see there, but it's basically an app that tracks performance um, of all of the different parts of github.com. And it's just a really good place to start to see if my deployment has caused any performance issues. So one of the areas that Hubot really shines in is incident management. Uh, without chat, chat ops, when stuff goes wrong, each person on a team might query Splunk and Graphite in their own browsers and do their own digging to try to figure out what's going on. Um, maybe someone will SSH into a box and run some commands. But collaboration is really difficult uh, because you can't see what the other person is doing. But and so dealing with incidents in this way is kind of really ineffective and doesn't work well at all for distributed teams. Um, so at GitHub, when something goes wrong, people grab some popcorn, pile into the ops channel, and help or watch as the problem is solved. So rather than list out a whole bunch of Hubot commands, which I thought would be kind of boring, I'm going to run through um, a little bit of a scenario about uh, an incident that occurred recently. Um, and just to demonstrate how chat ops made diagnosing and fixing this issue rather simple. So let's say that um, I'm on the on-call rotation and receive a pager alert about unicorn listeners. So the first thing that I'm going to do is jump into the ops channel and type hubot ack followed by the incident number to acknowledge the page that I just got. 
So the hello we got uh, is about Unicorn listeners. Uh, and for those of you who haven't heard of Unicorn, it's just a HTTP server for a Ruby. Um, so the, the Unicorn master spins up a bunch of workers, and the workers serve HTTP requests to your Rails application. So the second thing that I might want to do is ask Qbot to graph us, to show us a graph of the Unicorn listeners on our front end boxes. Um, and this graph me command here makes calls to Graphite, um, which is an open source real-time graphing application. So we notice, um, I notice at the end that the blue line, the number of workers active, seems to rapidly be reaching the unicorn worker limit, which is the red line at the top of the graph. And when this happens, we're not really going to properly be able to serve github.com page requests. Um, so I'm going to drop a comment in Slack to that effect. And uh, all of these yellow lines here just indicate deployments. Um, and given sometimes deployments are responsible for performance degradation, they can be helpful to add to your graph. So now my team member Amy jumps online, and she acknowledges the, pages, the page also. She can, of course, just see the graph that I put in, um, in chat. And so she adds a new graph, and she asks you about to graph uh, to produce a graph to compare the number of unicorn listeners queued for the API versus the website. And these graphite graphs can be pre-saved like we have here um, with the at symbol name, or you can just use a raw graphite query. Both will work. So seeing that the blue line hasn't increased like the green.com line here, Amy charts, whatever it is, it doesn't seem to be impacting the API. So given that we can rule the API out, let's get Hubot to graph us a, show us a graph of the most requested pages on github.com. Uh, in the response, we can see that there's this blue line, uh, and it's for the issues.index page, and, the, and a red line, which is for releases.index, are both experiencing a noticeable uptick. So we're still tracking down the cause, so Amy decides it's best to add 10 more front-end boxes in the meantime. So she uses the command qbot gpanel host bulk install app equals github role equals fe count equals 10 to do this. So gpanel is a Rails application that we built about four years ago. Uh, it's our inventory and provisioning management system that keeps track of all of our physical and cloud hosts. Um, and we built gpanel because we needed the ability to track physical components of data centers, cabinets, PDUs, chassis, switches, loose pieces of hardware. And in, in addition to that, it allows us to take some bare metal, install a particular operating system, and then provision it with Puppet. So in one simple command, Amy can spin up 10 new front-end boxes, and in about 15 minutes, they're going to be serving traffic. So I think that's pretty rad. So when the boxes have spun up, Amy's going to graph a uh, similar graph from before, which displays the number of unicorn workers available. Um, um, for the past hour. And we can now see towards the end there that there's a nice gap between workers active in blue and workers available in red. So we're kind of, we're, we're, we're safe for now. Um, and I'm not going to play out the rest of this scenario um, of how we uncovered and fixed the issue because I think you're starting to see the flow of how chat ops really works here. Um, but in case you're curious, we found out that there was a community built uh, Chrome extension which when installed, displayed desktop notifications every time a new release or issue or pull request was issued, um, was created. But the extension didn't use the GitHub API. Uh, instead, it issued thousands of requests per second to the GitHub website. Um, so we were able to contact the extension developer. They released a fix really quickly. And on our end, uh, we put in place some browser session rate limiting so um, that a rogue extension couldn't do this, uh, cause us any pain in the future. So that example shows us how using chat ops, solving problems is a highly coordinated effort that can easily be tackled by distributed teams. By having everything in chat, there's a shared context, so anyone can jump in and lend a hand. What's more, unlike a command line, Hubot provides an easy to access log of all past messages. Uh, team members who are asleep when, when this all happened can easily catch up the next day. Uh, in fact, it's easy to return to any point in time. So I've only been working at GitHub for about six months, 
And I found chat ops to be a really excellent way for engineers new to the team to learn how things are done. Uh, when you first start out, there are a lot of things to take in. Uh, and chat ops means that you don't have to remember everything. You can sit back and watch those incidents play out and see other people's thought processes uh, and watch how team members coordinate to solve problems. Um, chat ops has made the discovery and learning process that much faster and better and aided onboarding as the engineering team has scaled. Do I only have zero minutes? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> um, so, I have run out of time. Um, so we're always working to make uh, Hubot better. And as you saw before, we really rely on it for incident management. So one of the biggest things that we've shipped recently um, is improvements to make uh, Hubot a highly available distributed system. So if one Hubot node goes down, uh, the others can, um, can still function and we <laughs> will be able to continue to field uh, incident requests. Uh, if your team's not currently using chat ops, I really encourage you to give Hubot a try. It's super easy to get set up, and there's um, a whole bunch of community scripts that people have shared to help get started. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, Linda. Do you have questions? Um, so I, I work with dispersed teams too, so I'm very interested in how this can, uh, this can help our team too. Um, do each of your incidents have their own Slack room or something? How do you make sure that if there are 20 ex incidents at the same time, they don't all interfere with each other? Or they, if they want, they can listen in, but if they don't want to, do you create a new Slack room for every incident? Uh, um, so we have, a, we have a Hubot command. When an incident starts, um, I can't really remember what the exact command is, but something like Hubot incident. And Hubot will go and create a new Slack channel uh, a new, and a new issue on GitHub, and you just click into that channel. And all of that um, funnels through the ops channel. How do you deal? How do you deal with like permissioning in terms of like people doing deploys and that kind of stuff? Yeah, so um, mostly we just trust everyone to do the right thing, <laughs> which sounds crazy, I guess, but yeah. Um, so some, some deployments are scoped to specific rooms, but that's mostly just for readability. So you know if you go into like the puppet room, all the puppet deployments are happening there, um, and you wouldn't be able to deploy something from another room. But because, and I, I, I ran out of time, but because all of the uh, Hubot commands are written by subject matter experts, they're really safe commands to run, and people can see what you're doing. So if you restart a MySQL cluster, everyone knows you restarted it. So I think, you know, yeah. <laughs> You'll think about what you're doing. <laughs>